Hi everybody! Ugh, I haven't streamed in two years, so... Three warnings if I sound like a nervous wreck, because... Deep down I probably am. Let's give that a bit of a play. Well, do. Okay, so first off, hi, I'm Ryu Dragonheart. Um, in real life, I am a head chef who has just noticed that his volume is going all over the fucking place, so do give me two seconds to change my mic volume down a bit so I'm not screaming down your ear like I am the freaking cookie monster possessed. All right, apologies for that. Um... I'm a real sh IRL head chef. I run my own kitchen. I currently work at a retirement home. I have a. I started my career at 18 as a commie chef working for Delia Smith at Norwich City Football Club. Later on, I went uh, on to Cafe Rouge, Park Farm Hotel, Bella Italia. So I've worked in quite a lot of places in the kitchen and the catering industry since the age of 18 after I did two years at college to get my City and Guild certifications. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to give this game a try from the perspective of a real chef. It was something I wanted to do on release of the game, but because of anxiety and stuff I haven't streamed in two years, which I mentioned at the start. So, for those of you that don't mind me probably screaming at random bits like... God knows, whatever the f hell they've put in this game is a quick shortcut in accuracy. I have started a new game. Got through the character creation, made my chef. And we will be starting this together. As a slight heads up, I do currently have my fan running at full blast, so if the mic starts to pick up, please just say something in chat and I will try to sort that out. So we have Kasim! Look at you, your new uniform fits perfectly. It's as if it were made for you. It's like it came out of a character creator. As for the kitchen, I installed all the workstations, everything is up and running. How you installed an oven by yourself, I am impressed already. Which means it's time to get back to cooking. We only have three days until the grand opening. Oh, and I left you a little gift to help you get back up and running. Hope you like it. Oh my god, you left me a book? You bastard. Uh, recipe for beef and potatoes. Pay sure it's all the ingredients needed, as well as the workstation to provide a complete recipe. The recipe is divided into steps. Follow them in the correct order to learn how to cook the dishes. Wrong button, cronk. So, beef and potatoes. Quite easy. I don't know why it's classed as a French dish. Because it's something that gets cooked all over the world. Um... You can see the Americanizations, it turns into French fries. Okay, cool, whatever. Um, but it does use more French ingredients like shallots. Which again, something you can do all over the world. It doesn't really matter on the type of onion. However, a shallot will be a little bit more sweeter on the palate rather than harsh and bitter. Obviously during the cooking process, that you can change that yourself. Pin. Do you remember that recipe? It was the first one we learned in culinary school. Thank you, Mr. Gay. And welcome to the stream. I absolutely shat myself at the alert because I am not used to them yet. How was work? How were you? I thought it'd be the perfect dish to open our new kitchen. I stocked the shelves with all the ingredients. 
we need so you can get started right away. What a kind lad. He already wants a promotion. All the recipes you have pinned from the recipe book are shown at the top right of your screen. Start by looking at the list of ingredients, take them from the shell, increase self explanatory. It's going to tell me to get the beef anyway. I was going to come back for that, but cool. So... So I like how the tutorial is giving you completely different steps to the actual recipe provided. Which if you know it well enough, doesn't matter. Um, you are on Lurk. That is good. I hope you are lurking because you are okay, though. And not had a too bad of a day. So, to cut a big bit of steak like that, I would not normally use a cleaver personally. I would take my time and if you can see up where you've got the eye in ingredients, you can see a small little knife that is more of a filleting knife. It means you can take your time, you can get your cuts just right, and you can work with the grain and the tendon of the meat. With a meat cleaver, it requires a lot of wrist motion, so you kind of need a deftly cut wrist. It still cuts pretty well. If you've got a good bit of meat, it's not going to matter too much. But hey ho, that's just me. That's the tools I'm used to using rather than hit with the biggest knife. Of course, just doing that to a shallot is not going to dice out for you. But he who video game logic. Let me step out to fry on. Okay, fair enough. So at least it gives you the cookness on the flip menu. So normally at the start of service, some like a deep fat fry would always be already on the oil hot so all you have to do is just drop the fries and go because while this is currently sitting in my pocket there's no heat lamps so everything will just start going cold but given that it's a tutorial i think it deliberately does not count much for anything
Sorry, the Gech was literally at the ketchup sink of like. Like, normally you would have steak with like peppercorn sauce. If you want condiments like mayonnaise or ketchup, they would normally be at the side. Seems you're already getting the hang of working in a kitchen again. But I think the recipe is missing a little something. I added some notes to the recipe book. Take a look. I too have added some notes. Heck yourself. Uh, recipe book has been updated. You can now find some tips, special criteria to rotate your braid, and correct spices. Forming chef actions of a flip. As only a chef can initiate a flipping of meat. Ah, oh, cooking details. Wait, 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 wait. And now to do the most important job in any kitchen: wash the damn pans. Chop shallots, beef steak. the salt and the pepper. Maybe I don't want to. Maybe I want a bland dish. And I wish I actually had chef set. It'd make my life so much easier. Like, hmm, yes, I can look at this and go, not enough salt. Your sodium must be higher. Whoa, what happened here? Did you forget how to cook this dish? Don't worry, just try again. First, make sure you add the shallots at the right moment. Then keep an eye on the meat. Make sure it's properly cooked on both sides. And lastly, don't forget the spices. Well, I can read. I don't care. You're going to make me wash the pan up again.
so did it completely forget about the fact that I need a potato? Who's that? This is too long. But I just completely gloss over the fact that French fries are needed. It's fine, I'll blame myself. I glossed over it. Excellent, yes, good. The food you cook should be arranged on the plate in the appetizing way. Customize the dish so you would like it. Which I would like to get rid of the goddamn ketchup. Yeah, plate. Good. So what dishes have we got to work with? So, a white play or a black play, we're going to go for white on this occasion. My only choice is drop on the plate. Nice. Cool.
have a whole tree branch. Why not? If you would like to take a photo of this. I cook the food, I don't photographer it. I'm not a photographer. Howdy, Stinky. How are you? And thank you for the follow. It's coming through very delayed on... I've got the actual stream software on one screen, and then the stream on the other. It's like, I hear the alert, and then I see it like five minutes later through the actual stream. Let me out. Talk to Cassie. I'm good, D&D was cancelled, so I'm just going to work on some very overdue stick designs and lurk a bit. Oh, what sticker designs? Is that that £500 that I slipped you over Discord last night for stickers? Ah, good. I wondered why my account was negative. Welcome to Lurk. Happy Lurking. Oh, jeez. So gonna do some new Final Fantasy XIV designs, Reed and Kupo. Ooh! I mean, I'd go to KupoCon and buy them, but the friend group I was gonna go with abandoned me completely. I'm teasing. Ew, store. Uh, it's getting late though, so we should go to home. I'm not a bully. I'm only bully when you get better. But I will come with vengeance. But I'm doing okay. Thank you for asking. I hope you are doing better today as well. Dining room is ready. I've set up all the furniture and since I grind for two days, it's the perfect time to rush up on basics before the good day. Hi, Max. So you're the ones opening the new restaurant. I'm Max. Welcome to our Stacey. We see each other a lot. I'm sure I do the delivery for products supplies around here. Wants to take orders, so we'll be taking talking often. I look forward to it. But before I go, I've got some leftover stock from a previous delivery, so I thought I'd just love leave it with you. But not a word to my boss. Ah, freebies. I love a good freebie. So double-edged sword. Sometimes you'll or you'll do your ordering, your order will come in, and you get freebies. But night sometimes it's because they forgot to take it off a different order. So you get something free, but if you're not on the last one on the line, you end up someone else could end up getting your stuff that you might need. So it's a blessing and a curse, because it can also come back and bite you on the ass. I'm doing better, thanks. Still got a cough, but not feeling so tired. Yeah, not going to be so weak and go to bed at half one in the morning like a normal person. <laughs> I'm listening. Free produce, that's amazing. Take a look at the research table, see if those ingredients can be used in recipes. 
Uh, learn the recipe, Caprice. And basil or salt marinara and green beans. How to use the research thing. So easiest dish will be the mozzarella. How many points have I got? Two. One of both. Fuck it. Kitchy wrist. It would have been sooner if we didn't get stuck in the raid for half an hour. Look, you picked the raid, you were the leader. So, weirdly enough, whenever you come up with a new dish, you always want to cook, actually make it first, so then you can tweak the seasoning and other bits. So, I would say this is quite accurate. Because you are not just going to go, we're going to make this, slap it together, and then go, yes, excellent, perfection. It just does not work like that. Even if you've cooked it a million times. It's always best to still do a test run. It gets scary when also Bex is following. Your Roscoe is showing. He hungers. You will not appear in my walls, don't you dare. So, for a balsamic glaze, it is literally as it is on the screen. Balsamic vinegar, a lot of sugar. So what the sugar's going to do is this will basically caramelize. Because all it is is just a little bit of water to, caramel to start the caramelization process. And then just cook the ever-loving shit out of the sugar till it's a nice golden consistency. However, it does get up to about over three, 400 degrees. It also sticks, and if you are an idiot and decide I'm going to test it with my finger, you deserve every fucking painful moment of that burn. Um, it also cools down excessively quickly caramel. So, while it is on your finger, it basically encases that part of your body and it is very hard to get off to properly cool your finger down. It's not like a average burn and you can just run under the tap for 10 minutes. But anyway, tangent. For balsamic glaze, you use the sugar one to sweeten it and take away all that bitter acidity. But it's kind of a similar process. It also has balsamic vinegar has a lot of natural sugar. So it's quite easy to get it to become something very sweet. Ah, my nemesis. Okay, I'm going to get this out of the way very quickly. Tomato. We start. He's taken off the green stem and it started off in the correct position. However, if you look into it, you can see at the top and the bottom, not very accurately, mind you, because you want more of the bottom. And I don't know why I'm pointing it at my TV screen because you can't see my finger. Wow. Um, those bits at the top and the bottom are very quite chewy. What you want is the nice flesh in the middle. So in an actual professional restaurant, we would top and tail our tomatoes for two reasons. One, it's not pleasant. Second, stock. Everything you do, waste-wise, you always think of your stock. And what I mean by stock is not stock as in your physical ingredients. Stock is in that massive pot you sit in the kitchen, you put in your potato peelings, your carrot peelings, tomato, anything to make stock. No, you don't, Bex. You burn water. I'm about to get beat up. Oh, 
I'm not turning around if I don't see you, you're not there. So, basic presentation. We are only going to need probably a pitch of salt. Let's use our chef cheese system. Not enough. And now we can just carry on and finish the dish. Now, if I could put my balsamic glaze on that easily, I would be in miniature heaven. I think that looks pretty good as is, so I'm not going to replay this one. You could do it on a nice long plate and just have it going lengthways, which looks very nice. Um, but realistically, you're just going to want to go for the same concept. It's just mozzarella tomatoes. If you wanted to do something like um, wrap the mozzarella in parma ham, you could also do that as a slight meat introduction and do it as a three layer tomato parma ham mozzarella or you can just replace the mozzarella completely with your parma ham um traditionally in italy it would pretty much just be like this from what i've seen there's probably restaurants out there now that do something a bit more out of the norm something a bit more out there like wrapping in parma ham but that also does kick up the price of the dish because Palmer have very expensive. Very nice. If you ever end up in Italy, I would definitely recommend having Palmer ham and not to worry too much about the cost. Because being an Italian meat, especially even if it's from their variation of the supermarket, which is, I think it's, I think it's called Dino Store. I might be getting mixed up with Spain. And I kid you not, their mascot is just a dinosaur. It is very... It does actually start melting in your mouth and melts on the tongue. Whereas if you buy it from, like, the UK, from Morrison, Sainsbury's or other, it's very chewy, even if they get the cut right. Um, there is also a very strange taste to it from how long it gets preserved trying to ship from Italy to the UK. And then it would cost you an arm and a leg to actually get the proper ingredient to the Italian standard. Alright, so... What fish be? Is it green? Or lemon sole? Sole. A sole fish. So there are a lot of variations of sole. It really wants to depend on why I put it there. I have no fucking idea. E e e e I want my fish back. There we go. So, I can't tell which type of soul this is. It's definitely not a lemon soul. It's definitely not a Dover soul. But how I would prep it in an actual kitchen is how I was taught. So, you want to start with your knife in where that line is where the gill meets. And then you just literally want to follow it around, take the head off, take your tail off, which you can't see because of the shoulder. Um, quite easy, you just follow it around, pair of scissors. Again, I would not use a meat cleaver, because as you can also see with the head, if you followed that line along, you have just gained more meat. Um, now he's using a proper filleting knife, and yes, you would want to descale it. I wouldn't have done it like that straight from the tail, but it honestly does depend on the size of the fish, and obviously your bones are not going to come up. So for what he's done, he should have followed the spine down from the neck, or we'll say from the gill cut, straight down to the tail, go, following the spinal pattern. Then he, using the correct filleting knife, because it's got that nice little bend to it for the fish knives, you would then 
with one stroke, start basically letting that come away from the bow. And it's literally the same as you're just grazing it. If you start doing it in two strokes, like you get halfway down and then again, you're going to start taking the flesh off and you're pretty much going to start tearing the meat. So you're going to leave a lot of meat on that bone. It's not a life or death sort of problem because again, you could then put that into the stock pot and make a nice fish stock. So that would be your protein because a lot of our stocks, even though we put a lot of vegetables in it, to make a chicken stock, it would just be the chicken bone, chicken carcass, roasted in the oven slowly. Beef bones, if you want to make a beef stock. For a fish, it would just be your fish bones, fish heads, so on and so on. So the only thing that would probably be in out of this would be that tail trim, because that's just the nice little fin. The head would definitely go into a stock pot. And like many great chefs, I've walked into my dry stores and I've forgotten what I need. So don't know why I don't have butter in the fish stock. So, flour. So I think the intention with this is to fry it in a pan. So, with a lot of fishes, they are quite a delicate meat. So that flour, very similar to how you would do southern fried chicken or chicken goujons, that flour is going to protect the meat during the process. Um, so in our case, this serves two purposes: protects the delicacy of the fish, so it doesn't cook too fast and burn. Second, that flour could then start soaking up any fish juices or your fish stock and start giving your sauce some thickness. Uh, because we have fish stock and butter, this is probably more of the way to go. So that's our fish. Pot of water, green beans. Didn't stuff any green bin, big green bins. The green bin beans, uh, beans, use the word beans, into my pants. So pot of boiling water. Pot's a bit excessive for one portion, but bring that up to the boil. I personally would add a little bit of salt. There is no real reason for salt, but it just seasons the water. So, brought up to the boil. Just makes it quicker. There's our salt. If it said pepper, I would be very shocked. But while I have this animalistic chef sense, then woohoo. Me personally, I would give these green beans 10 minutes. And just with the tip of the knife, I would check the ten tenderness. Um, if, you, if it goes through nicely, you can then pick it out of the water, take a bite and see if it's got like al dente. If you're cooking pasta, that word is going to come up a lot. But with vegetables, you want that, you still want a crunch to it. Um, with green beans, if it goes too far, it'll just turn to mush in your hands. So you still want that nice vibrant green, that nice crunch. Again, that salt will give it a nice flavour and pull out more of that natural beany goodness. So that yields a lot of portions of beans. Clean as you go, always clean as you go. Frying pan, cooking range, you know, just cut it up. So kind of similar as how I've talked about the flour, you want to get your pan nice and hot so, like again, it's a delicate fish, so heat is going to penetrate into that protein very quickly. So what you want to do is get a nice sear on each side and then let it, the heat go from a high to a medium.
And then essentially what we're doing now is we're doing a poach. So the best way to describe this very quickly is just imagine a poached egg. You're, you're cooking in boiling water. Uh, it's not just to water, it's mostly, the definition is to a liquid. So we are letting our stock now do the work. As it's covered, you would add the butter to the second bit because butter, when it burns, I guess I didn't make it to the second bit, but it says it's fine on the first. And I'd say just about to the middle of that second, you would have a tablespoon in your hand and you would start basting the top of that meat. Um, the reason why this is probably not being flipped is because this is the presentation side. So if it goes a little bit too far on the bottom and it goes black and flaky, or you just get too much of a char, you can then present it on the plate. They're still going to notice the texture if you really mess it up. So again, we would not want some hot lights, we would want that pan under them or the individual bean portions. Just so they stay warm. Um, the only thing, the thing you won't see in this game is proper temperature control. Because even though, yes, we can put the green beans under those hot lights, they're not going to stay at a consistent legal temperature forever. You would cook to 75 degrees, and then, oh, uh, what is it? 75 degrees in the UK is your minimum cooking temperature, where in Scotland it is 80 degrees. And I think the minimum is 65. The minimum will vary depending on chain companies, personal restaurants who follow their HACCP rule, but you're normally going to get an average of minimum 65 for a display unit. Uh, food would often be, if you're in a buffet style, a uh, maximum of two hours, then no matter what, they would have to sw switch it out, destroy it. Because by that point, it cannot be reheated. Um, not a fan of... Mm -hmm. See, this is when, in my personal opinion, artists would flourish mostly in the kitchen. Alright, so from one aspect, I've picked the wrong plate. What you want to do is mostly get anything you want to do in the middle of that plate. And then you can always expand a little out. But the rim of the plate is always king. That always stays clean. You don't present it, you don't overlap onto it. It's not always the case, but you'll get there. That seems more of a realistic thing. But it's probably... um, unfortunately, I cannot make a rose or a flower shape out of any fish. That does require a fucking amazing talent. Um, but what the recipe would call for a base of something like that. I'll show you the box. That's kind of the equivalent of slapping a piece of fish onto a plate. You've never seen this before. So, like how I said, this is kind of more something I would want. And this is how I would cut it too. It would, I would say due to the thickness, this would not be a sole. And I can see the damn fish in my head this would be more close to the thickness of a turbot. Unless you get a really good fish, then you, maybe you can equate it to a sole. Stop. Stop messing around with the position. So, me personally, I would prefer a fish like this. You've got the nice presentation and the crust of the skin. And underneath this, you've got a nice, cooked, flaky skin.
presentation wise. If it was a fillet of salmon, you would present it up like this. However, the design of the game has kind of made that bit flat. It's a flat fish. There's nothing we can do. Um, also, a lot of people in like my age range, so 30, doxing myself a little, would not eat fish skin. So by presenting it like this, you can also ask your waiter to do silver service. And they would then use a knife and a fork to remove the skin. Uh, once it's cooked, it's very easy. It's like taking clean film off, really. Um, the only thing that would make it hard would be like a tiny little pin bone that might get stuck in there. And then it's like someone stapled something to it. Um, personally, I would not cook and plate a whole fish. Um, there is two reasons. One, it's big. Two, it's not trimmed. As soon as a customer sees the head and the eyes, puts them off instantly. So a motto we always use in the kitchen is first you eat with your eyes and then you eat with your mouth. I mean, it puts everyone off. It doesn't matter if you're a vegetarian like yourself. Um, it's something about... If your eyes meet the animal's eyes, you start to actually feel a bit of compassion towards it. Some people do not give a flying fuck. But also, that head is very valuable again to my stock pot, so that means I can make more sources of it. Um, you could roll it and present it with a nice char grill sear. If you want to go really fancy, I would say the rose would be nice. It's got a nice plate area. You, this a nice roll skewer through it would be a nice bet as well. But I'm going to do something I can't do and go with the rose. Hit up here. Hit up here. That would not be viable. You would not have that much structural structural integrity. Even though your fish has been overcooked, it's a bit too firm. Um, this kind of breaks my rim is king rule a little bit. Now, if there's no way to neatly place these on, the but it's a game. So we are not going to go too fussy.
I'd say that's a bit too messy, but... Give the mild pass. don't like that. Uh, another thing is like overcrowding a plate. But unfortunately for me, I have to work to this little bar's like minimum spec part. Again, you would want a nice long plate and presenter, I would put one on each end of this nice long plate, green beans in the center, then the second stack of green beans in the center. And then apply sauce as needed. Uh, this lemon sauce you would then also offer out onto the side in like a small little gravy boat. So then customer can apply as they like. I have that gauge on the left. So there is a minimum requirement to what I can use. Like with the sauce I've nearly maxed out, I could use less. Uh, with the fish we've just they just got over the minimum, so I would still need that third rose. And it also depends on portion size, like a single green bean will only fill up by that tiny amount. The little bunch. But we can always replay another time. In fact, I definitely would replay that another time. Um, I'm probably not going to go with a garnish. As we haven't got many unlocked. So I will just stick with that. Just bounce out. That's it, I just made it. What you need? Alright, go talk to Thingy Bob. Cool. I'm paying attention, I swear. Finish setting up the storeroom, we can order our produce starting tomorrow. So, what you did to those two new dishes, they look delicious. Do you want to keep working on them or? Go and max the delivery girl to eat here tomorrow night. Now, I thought it was a game bug and it wasn't going to let me. Um, so, when opening a new place, it is normally something that would happen where you would invite your staff and your staff's family to come and eat before your actual opening night. This serves the purpose of basically giving you, yourself a trial run. Unfortunately, some of those staff members will have to work. But you would also change the, give them the full menu experience. 
at one point some places like this is going back into the early 2000s so when i was just in college it would be free so that if something major does happen you're not going to feel like an absolute carrot about it um sadly as the years went on ingredient prices went up food prices nowadays we've got the cost of living crisis in the uk nine times out of ten you would at least get some sort of discount or if not only pay half price for that menu general rule would be the basic drinks wise you would not get a free bottle or you might get a free bottle for your table of wine or something but it would just be a one-time thing you could then still have more but you'd be paying full price for that bottle of wine something cheap like beer or coca-cola which isn't exactly that cheap nowadays but by the by you would get free for the night so it's also a big thank you for setting up the restaurant doing your part talk to this guy as well uh And during like through your service points you would then like come christmas time um uh, like uh norris city football club you would then have the head chef and the sous chefs make breakfast for the entire staff and you would get that completely free as much as you can eat as much as you want it would be something like scrambled eggs bacon roll i think we got the first christmas i worked and nothing too strenuous but they would then do it like to the same quality as the restaurant Pretty basic menu. Highest price marker steak, so we'll put that on special. Oh, the steak and the fish are kind of the same. I personally enjoy beef more than fish, so I'm going with that. Going through the store and this is place orders of producer. Basically, food storage, veg, meat, so on. A singular freezer unit. Yeah, right. Uh, what do you need for the daily service? It would not be that small. So, quality of ingredient. Agricultural farm. Pretty self-explanatory. You would get the freshest of your local ingredients, and you always want to go for the local suppliers more so with your meat and your fish your vegetables it's not really a hard one to mess up people still are going to want that the absolute best out of their meat and their fish demographic might have changed a bit more to the other side of quality control for vegetables potatoes and everything given now that we have more of a vegetarian and vegan clientele to support like back when i was studying catering vegan food was unheard of vegans did not exist really in that sort of period in professional cookery we had vegetarians galore we had gluten freeze we had pescatarians and then we had the obvious religious needs if you they your customer was jewish they could not eat pork Etc. Etc. Which, on the vegan front, it is actually quite nice to see there are more chefs that specialize towards vegan food. Because, quite literally, it was for the very early years of my career, as you could ask me to make a vegan meal. I would have no idea where to start. I would have to first sit down with a bunch of books and actually start learning what would be cool for a vegan to eat. 
and things like that, but then I couldn't then... It would be very boring. Vegan food was pretty much... Oh, we'll just give them stuffed peppers and rice. And a lot of that was bland, and a lot of people were getting angry from it, which is understandable. You want to go out and have a nice meal. Now we've got more recipes that even people like me can fall onto. Um, personally, I hate avocados. They're, they're very hard to keep nice. They literally have a day's lifespan onto them. But that is now something that is more considered and more used to vegan cookery. But anyway, ordering. So, minimum account, I need to order four lots of veg. Am I going to change the menu to, for the next day? Usually, no. You would then... Um, an avocado. You would first run your knife down the side. You'd not top it, you'd not tail it. You just run it down the side just so you can get that stone out. And then you try to, as delicately as you can, and if you've got a nice avocado, your thumbs aren't going to squish into it, but you try to separate a side for it. And then you've got one half with the, the nice cannonball stone in there. You would grab your knife, flick it at least, straight to that stone, twist it, and then it would just come out. And then you've got two nice halves of avocado. Um, oxygenizes excessively quick. So it goes brown and mushy. It basically, it starts going off very quick. You could quickly cut it up, put it in some water and lemon juice. And, but the problem is if you don't get to it at time, you've got a big number of avocados to cut through. It will then very quickly start turning into a slush. But they have taken, th there is a lot more bigger strides in using avocados. Um, that reminds me, my grandma said she used to work at a vegetarian cafe in the 70s and 80s, and it was super popular because there was just wasn't much of its kind around back then. No. Um, the 70s, 70s and 80s are considered like the golden age of gastronomy. So back then you wanted duck, you wanted a lot of French cookery, which French cooking at the time wasn't... You didn't have, like, how we make ratatouille today. Ratatouille back then was still considered a peasant's dish, even though it was developed, like, way back in medieval France. So, just having vegetable dishes, it was, like, a special case for that one vegetarian that comes with the group. Or... It just wasn't really used. Everyone wanted duck confit. These really elaborate dishes. Now I'm trying to actually think about them. I'm drawing a massive blank. <laughs> um, but yeah. It, we, we were discovering all these new methods of cooking. It was... It, the 70s and 80s was a very different breed of cooking especially in like the kitchen culture um sadly a lot of the negative kitchen culture is still practiced today like i've had experiences of my head chef putting a knife up against me um i've been choked out with a damn apron and these were all these weren't like provoked things the stress of the job would kind of caused them to go absolutely batshit fucking crazy. I've watched my sous chef get into an absolute punch up with the KP and I to this day I don't know why but this waitress just came into the kitchen and was like stop them, break them up, one of them's gonna kill the other and it's like I'm going in the fucking middle of that. I've got this prep to do. Doody 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 doo. Um it is a, it is a very very different breed of it's like you hear all these people complaining about locker room banter in like sports and if you if you're a chef you literally laugh at them 
Because if they knew this type of banter that actually went on in the kitchens, it is like so chill and so calm compared to what chefs get up to and how chefs are treated. So we don't also just have the stress of like serving to a standard of customer, constantly maintaining a quality, constantly having this guy shouting at us because it's his ass literally on the line, which you can't when you think about it like that you can't blame the Gordon Ramseys for being Gordon, like Gordon Ramsay. Um which by the way, super lovely guy, absolutely nothing like he's on TV. Um but we are slowly coming out of it. And sometimes, like, having a go at your commie chef because you've told him three times is something you can't avoid. But you don't berate them in front of the entire kitchen sort of thing. Uh, that is literally a best case scenario. But that was the norm back in the 70s and 80s. So anyway, back to ordering. I require four today. If I wasn't changing the menu, I would order eight. Because I know the menu is going to be the exact same for the following day. Now oh, the agriculture store actually does mean fish, so this makes my life a lot easier. So you would try and bulk order for as much as you can. You'd also get a booking number so you'd know exactly how many guests. Sometimes you'd know exactly what they want before they get there. So you could then order the 12 sets of veg. Not a lot of meat eaters in tonight, so you'd order... My minimum is three. I'd probably do then four to five. My bulk order would fluctuate and change depending on the guest demographic. So if it then shoots up, suddenly I've got enough there to cover any sudden changes. I've then got enough rollover to not have so much money going out at once. It would also save you from like a bad batch as well. And it kind of also reflects in the game's mechanic because your responsibility goes up. Let's see if it's gone up based on... Yeah, it's going up and down based on how much I'm bulk buying as well. I'll collect all your products and be right over. Delivery is on its way. Touch up the dining room. And to be honest, it would just get stored in the fridge and you just work with the highest quality you can. It's not always a good idea to just fill your fridges to the brim for the sake of filling the fridges. Because like when you get a lull of everybody wants to eat veg today and not have a lot of meat, you'll then eventually spoil and then your quality control will then start going down. Uh, add a second cooking range. It's easy, we're gonna go for this one. Second cooking range. And we have a hot plate now, even better. Decorate the restaurant. Nice, easy. Lamp. Chef, I've delivered your order. Good for you. Oh, I actually have it. I've managed to change a lamp. Now I must talk to Max about my delivery. Uh, put everything in the fridges. By the way, produce drops in expiration date. Keep that in mind because you want to serve fresh dishes to customers. Kind of essentially what I've already explained. So you take for the day. Stock management. So six in there. Frozen fish, frozen meat. There's a reason you don't generally freeze your veg, but 
because you want to maintain that freshness. If you put like your cooked veg in there, you can then end up with a lot more browning, easier freezer burns. It can be done. It just takes away the visual and the actual quality of the vegetable. Firmer vegetables like carrots, a lot easier, less risk. Something like broccoli, that's when the browning comes in and the mild freezer burn. And also because they're cooked in boiling water, they do freeze quick. But when it comes to like fish and meat, it literally puts a massive pause button on the meat or the fish decomposing. Um, something I learned during my fish apprentice course was literally as soon as that fish dies, within seconds the decomposition starts. And the quality is pretty much on a timer for the entire process. That is why there is a lot more um, knowledge of quality checking your fish, even if you're buying it off the fish market, like sunken in eyes, you want it a nice sheen, you want it to smell of the ocean. And when I say smell of the ocean, there should not be any scent from the ocean. So how do you determine a smell? It's like fresh seawater. If it's like you're walking down the pier and you can smell fish in the air, that's when it's gone too far. It's a very hard thing to describe and kind of get the right sort of example when you're just talking about it. But yeah, I'm not going to go through the entire fish quality check routine. Because then it just makes me feel like I am just vomiting stuff and boring people. So lazy feature, prioritize quality, prioritize expiration dates. That is something you realistically always have to keep an eye on. Sometimes you might have to sacrifice quality to avoid a waste. Especially if it's something like steak. Uh, yeah, because even then you still have a ticket time bomb to like grind up to burgers or something. Right, Max and I will act in regular customers. As... Cook some food in advance, cut the tomato slices, cut the mozzarella, chop the shallots, french fries. Flower your soul. So, what I want to do is. Too much balls. Shop slots. There's only two of them, so we can't properly determine what they're gonna have. So biggest job just gets there. Do the fish. So let's also talk about hand technique. You would not, even to cut a head off, hold your fish like that. You run the risk of taking off that top your finger, even hitting your thumb. You would correctly grab the tail, but you would not lay your fist, your hand on the top of the fish like that. You would then, you would lay your palm flat and curl your fingers upwards. Worst case scenario, it's just going to follow off and glide. Or you might just hit that middle part of your fingers. Realistically, not a big injury. Does happen. It's high risk in a kitchen. You can't avoid it. But if you use the proper hand techniques like the Gorilla Grip, so on and so forth, it just minimizes the injury to yourself. That's why we don't trust, trust Bex with knives. We give them to Mr. Gay. So again, he's using the Gorilla Grip, but he's using it at the wrong angle. You'd want to have your fingers so if the worst case happens, you catch your nail. Nail grows back. Unless you completely separate it out of your finger, then no, it does not. 
it is also very wet mozzarella if you're lucky to have it dry overnight in some kitchen roll in the fridge so you get a bit more dryness to the outside and manage to keep it nice and water retained in the middle you have an easier time slicing up personally i would not recommend that if you're getting packs from the supermarket cut the top strain the liquid give it a gentle squeeze over the sink and just drain as much of that excess off personally i still use the gorilla grip and just feed it through with my thumb but once I get to the end, you would lay that end bit flat. And again, you would do the open palm, curl your fingers up, take the top off. If your knives are sharp enough, one motion. But end pieces, it doesn't really matter too much. You don't need too much presentation if you're really not happy with it. Nice little snack for you. Tomato, again, coming in from the side with the thumb and finger, doing a chopping motion. End hand technique? No. I would again use my ends to throw them into stock. Too much of a risk to your fingers. Your fingers are the best tool you have in the trade. And literally, if you go one handed, you are going to be peeling sacks of onions until you are able to properly use your hand again. And if you've been working through the ringer and you're now doing the work of a commie chef again, Honestly, it sucks. During my commie chef years, I would come into work. We're going back again to Norwich City Football Club. I would do a 8 o'clock in the morning start. And I'd go home at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Sometimes I'd then have to stay longer to do the evening chef de shift, sorry, depending on what events we have in like um, Top of the Terrace or the Gun Club. But nine times out of ten, I'd still only be there till 11 because, man, I need to get my last train home. I don't care if the head chef doesn't give a shit. I want my bed. I'm going to make sure I get home. If there was another mode of transport, different story. There wasn't. Oh, well. Let's line up my next tomato. I've also gone off on a tangent and completely forgotten the point of what I was doing. Uh, talking about even... Shallot technique, absolutely just messed up. Potato, magically, you put it on the board and it peels itself. Hand not right, I would cut that potato in half and then work to the flat surface. You would never have anything with a curve, because if that thing slips across the board, you're going to pray to God you do not hit your hand or your fingers. That's what I was talking about. Peeling sacks upon sacks upon sacks. So my entire day would compress up of those hours of peeling three, four sacks of onions back to back, making sandwich fillings. So that would be egg mayo, tuna mayo, whatever fillings were needed, coronation chicken, so on and so forth. And barbecue sauce that they make, which I still vaguely remember the recipe spec. So that would be for the cooking the barbecue ribs then go into the freezers and then yellows would then take that out as they need them and yellows is like the american style burger place that was also built into it yeah you would go by half and you would then work to the size of your chip cuts by the potato so again alakazam potato alakazam peeled directly in half and then while it's laying flat, you would then cut to the size of your chips. Another way you could do it is you would take the two side ends, so then you've got a nice flat, turn it onto your flat, take the two sides, and then you end up with a nice cube shape. And then you could do like your diced potatoes, because you're going to need to put these guys in water, they're going to slip everywhere, and again, you pray to God you do not take out your hand. I think it's mostly because... I think humans can't grow limbs back or something. I'll ask the Lizard Queen another time.
So we're going to now store these in the refrigerator ready for service. Not a huge loss. See, another thing that irks me about this game is I have two shelves and yet I can't use that bottom shelf. Um, placement of ingredients, utterly wrong. You, you definitely cause someone to have food poisoning. You've got raw fish, you've got your cheese, dairy products, you've got your vegetable chips. Um, a lot more science is coming out of what in potatoes and chips would kind of affect you. At one point, like in 2016, it was the green parts of potatoes would increase your chance of developing cancer. But that's really it. It would just cause a weird increased chance. Um, another hot topic they're going on at the moment is acrylamides. And basically this is something in found in the starch of potatoes which you would need to consume f an absolute fuck ton of raw potato is it raw potato or just general general potato we're going to say general potato to have these acrylamides become a problem and what they do is just they simply outright kill you but you would literally need to be sitting in the dry stores like a little gremlin boiling sacks upon sacks of potatoes and eating nothing of potatoes for half a year and then these acrylamites will start being an issue but i mean these people that sit in the office need something to moan about um cook green beans on the cooking range Uh, yes, your potato. In you would literally need to eat nothing but sacks upon sacks, and these are two kilogram sacks I'm basing these off in my mind, of nothing but potato. And it's like constantly. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and tea. It's a very silly thing, but some somewhere. Something has gone wrong for someone, and it's caused people to crap themselves. Salt! More salt! Not enough salt! Perfect. Enough salt. Good job. And now, we wait. When Bex is safe from potato consumption, you know you have a happy Bex. Warning, you Bex sold is different. Please do not. We are not held responsible for any Bex that may harm you after 2am. Give me the pot! There we go. Ready for service. In the real world? No, it is not fucking ready. But hey ho! Hee <laughs> hoo! You're doing great. We will be able to have Max come for service. Will we now? Uh, yeah, 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 I know. Service like the back of my hand. Right, hit me with it. Who's having what? Uh, we want one soul and one tomato, blah, blah, blah. So we are going to want our tomato, we're going to want our basil for garnish. We've got our green beans, we've got everything else sorted. So, we're going to grab our mozzarella. Ugh, balsamic clay. How could I forget my balsamic blade? Sugar, spice, and everything nice. Uh, 
Um, yes and no. Yes for the fact of how long do you really want to wait for your food? I now want fish stock and butter. And place on ready back stir. Press the wrong button. Put it in. Leave it to do its thing. One of the good graces of that is it's cold, so we don't have to worry too much. Take our fish, grab our green beans. Now you have two options when you're doing this. You could have sent the salad as soon as it was done, but normally you want to send everything on the table together, start as mains desserts in those bracket orders. Serve. So if it's got to be a long wait, you could get the salad knocked out, have that place to the table. But not everyone wants to, you know, they, most people want to wait for the whole table so you can eat together. So speaking on the case of a timer, where I've got the tickets on the top left hand side of the screen, which now you got a second ticket, you can see it because Vex is blocking you. Haha. Uh -huh. That white indicator is the time limit I have to cook and send to keep them happy. Once that then drops more, I think they then start to go from a yellow frowny face to a red I'm angry and then they piss off. You normally want to send dishes as fast as you can, but you cannot sacrifice speed for quality or quality for speed. Moving fast, you sacrifice quality. Overdoing it on quality, it slows you down. You have to, as a chef, find a good middle ground. But it's normally always the case of just be upfront with how long things are going to take. Normally, good food, there's a wait for it. But then wait a long time and it comes to absolutely crap. Then you have every right to complain about whatever you want to complain about. So this order based on the game systems is those heat waves are for how far they want their steak done. I'm assuming one is rare, medium rare to well done. Well done, you absolute heathen, enjoy your burnt piece of meat. You've, this 
steak has lost all flavour. Speaking of, I didn't cut any meat, I'm sorry. Let me do that for you. You say that as if you've eaten a steak. I mean, everyone can have their steak however they like it. It just seems crazy that you'd pay nearly £18 for a nice bit of ribeye to have it basically burnt. Not charcoal burnt, but overly cooked, no juiciness to it, not a lot of flavour left. But some people do like it like that. That's nearly done. Whack our chips in. And now we just wait for that line to get over to the well done side. We might get these at the same time, we might not. Right. Take the steak. Take the chips. Straight over to the counter. Easy peasy. Plus quality, excellently prepared, good quality. But the ingredient quality we're currently buying at, we're not going to hit 100%. No way, no how. Thanks for the meal. It was simple food, but it really hit the spot. You'll have clients lining up around the block for sure. For a practice service, it went really well. It gives me a lot of confidence for the grand opening. Now that our guest has gone, it's time to clean up the kitchen. Well, yeah. So we take whatever we have left off, put it in the wrap-up area, which I really still don't know what that accomplishes in this game, because you can't go back and, like, reuse them. We then take all these out of the fridge, wrap them, see if we can use them for the following day. The K your KP would be in the wash up. They'd have all the pans and pots done. Chefs, depending on your rank, would then be sorted out a prep list for the following day. So then you can just come in, crack straight on whatever you've got to. But it would be the KA's responsibility to have all the pots and pans washed and cleaned. All the units, all the appliances, floor mopped, swept. And then the next stage of what happens would be when everyone finishes. Uh, it's normally a rule of thumb if you're working in a good kitchen that nobody goes home until everyone is done. And that includes the KP. No matter... The head chef is the only one that would be exempt. Because they would then have to go into the office and go through any complaints by the customers, go through all the receipts. 
which depending on the kitchen again or the restaurant that would be the thing they would do straight away sometimes they'd cut out just as the night starts to get quiet and then the sous chef would take over at the pass quality checking and sending out to the customer I have not worked in a lot of kitchens where the head chef cooks nine times out of ten they are in the office doing the receipts but it is a good boost for morale when your head chef does join you to prep all cook and then we'd all go out for a bit and then go home go to bed or stay out get absolutely train wrecked and literally come straight back into work Dishes will not fail to burn. Turn that off. Recipe reminders. Details of certain dishes are displayed as you cook. But why not? It just. I don't want a complete one to one experience. Fewer customers that can stay off. Calm service. This means no one will get pissy as they eat. Normally you wouldn't have reminders there, you would have to study and learn the spec of each of your dishes. And you'd have to literally keep doing it, doing it, doing it until it becomes reflex memory and repetition. That's kind of why we hit, <clears throat> try to keep min menu changes as minimal as possible. And we base it off the seasons and what vegetables are in season spring we often would do more lamb based dishes because that's when the spring lambs come in hence the name if you're working for a kitchen or a company that is oh fuck i forgot the name of them something like bella italia they're like chain restaurants that's the word they would have the specs of each dish printed out and plastered over the section of the kitchen you're working on and these very rarely change anyway but then you would also have the visual reminder if you to double check yourself there is a lot less hand holding when you're in a professional restaurant there is also a lot more consequences if you piss off the head chef and constantly get it wrong and have a lot of complaints Um, how many slots have we got left for dishes? Fair few, but I don't think I have any upgrade points. Tell a lie, that's, I have two, but I'm not at the bottom. So, dishes stay the same. This time around, we've got our overstock. So, we are fine for produce, so we don't have to put an order in today. Am I likely to change the menu tomorrow? Yes. Let's do it later. Unless I can see how much more I need to level up, which I can't see. So I will say yes, and we'll just get through use what we have. We, we don't need a really bad music tour of the office. Apparently I really like my sous chef. Open the catalog in your office. Catalog. Um, am I just looking at these or am I buying anything? We don't really need a secondary deep fat fryer. Fire pizza. I can afford one. But do I need one? Realistically, we don't really need to buy anything. I would probably jump straight to a second fridge. 
or a second hot plate, but at the moment we don't really need anything. I am, however, going to buy that wood fire pizza stove because why not? Welcome to the management panel of your restaurant. Now the, the restaurant page, each page, profiles, team, city, previous service. And this is basically just tells me details of the restaurant. So we've got responsibilities were at max. Hygiene could be a lot better. Only been open for four days, but for some reason you can't clean your own kitchen too well. Profile, this is just for me. Team, we have Kasim. He specializes in fish dish dishes. Um, contacts in the city, max out delivery person. And then we can look at, double check any reviews from the previous service. But now, chat, your part in this game. What symbol should we use for our restaurant and what name should we give it? We have a fork kind of paired with a wine glass. The oh, oh, oh your entree. Picture of a painting of a wine glass, knife and fork, chef hat, wine glass, knife, fork, spoon. A boiling pot. Fork and spoon. A fish, a lobster. Liz. Gonna leave that for a little longer. Spatula and a roasting fork. A nice steamy piece of meat. You like the octo- is it because I said Liz? A roast chicky. This is a cock ball. A steamy pot and a weird background. Cheese and wine. Oh, so you just think he's neat. Um, fork and pasta. Some three baby carrots. Fork and spoon. Baguette. Slice of pizza and a fork. Wine glass and a fork. So, by the looks of it, it's between the spagoot and the... and Liz. Yes, we know about your pasta addiction. Um, that's up to chat, because there is no style of, of cuisine that... Basically, that impact will just come off whatever dishes you put on the menu. At the moment, I don't have any spaghetti dishes. I think I unlocked one of them at about level 6. But we will ha most likely end up with pasta dishes. Once we unlock more, I'll let chat make the menu. And then curse you all. Hmm. Bex is doing the big brain. You like the octopus. We will go with the octopus. We will have Liz as our mascot. But what shall we name the restaurant? The styling of Liz and the popping of Muppet Shark. Oh, how could you? Bix is a bully. So we're trying to come up with a name for the restaurant. Yes, we are asking for names. Sous chef. <laughs> oh, I'm sous chef. I mean, there is an actual position called the sous chef, so it works. Weirdly.
how could you not think of a food pun? Have I taught you nothing? See, I'd come up with a food pun, but then I get scrapped over with spelling. I've got one because it's an octopus. Man, where's Mr. Gay when I need them? Actually, where's Sean? Sean would come up with a good food pun. Um... Fetter than ever. Okay. I'll take it. You butter believe it. Okay, now I can't choose between the two. Um, better than ever, you butter believe it. I'm kind of swinging to butter believe it. This is where I now learn there's a character limit. There we go. Bex has committed a crime today. Go to my snoozy place. You can fast forward time. Quick little pep talk. I have the game now teaches me how to give him instructions to clean the kitchen. Hi. But it's the only job there is available, so that's what he'll do automatically. Right, so same menu, same basis. We know we're going to need to do... Soul. Ooh. I'm going to try and do is prep two of each ingredient. Place in the fridge. The protein doesn't really take up much. Where am I going? So we're going to put our green beans on first. Place it down, get them ready. I'm gonna grab our salt and pepper so it's in our pocket so we can season that when we need it. How's 
it going today? It was going great until you got here. Tomato. Chop, 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 chop. Choppy, 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 choppy. Done. Shovels. Magically peeled. Beautiful. Choppy, 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 choppy. And again. Choppy, 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 choppy. Potato. Magically peeled. Also increases in size. Choppy, 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 choppy. Like magic. I am a chefing wizard. I forgot my cheese. I wish potatoes did actually do that. Same dish together. And then I say that and it messes me up. So I can get one bit of fish in there. I reckon we're going to have more than one that we're going to need. So if it'll allow me, which it probably won't. No. Once the order's put in, it's locked in, so we are stuck. I could also customize the restaurant, but I think that's past that time too. Plus, I don't need two recipe books at each end of the kitchen. Level 4, we unlock the pasta dish bags. And then orange carrot mint consomme. Basically a really vegetable -y broth soup. Lots of flavour, lots of veggie. I'll be at the top of my game today. You can count on it. Yes you will. You will work that mop like a pro. Yes, guide me to the store cupboard. Soon. As in T S U space O O N. We dip it, we done it, it's good. Golden. That's literally all the pre prep I can do at the minute. Ooh, my green beans. My water is boiled, my crops are ready. In you go. Double assaulting, perfect. Speed along. This is where I accidentally burn them. Just watch. Look, 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 Oh, oh, the bar. Beautiful. A surprise visit? I wonder who that could be. No, really, who is this guy? Is this a new restaurant? I just came to welcome you to the beautiful to our beautiful city. I'll try to come and eat here in the next few days. I can't wait to see what you have on the menu. Oh, it's literally to your left. You can read it now. It's right there. It's in big enough writing. Maybe consult your doctor for glasses. You ruined my nap just to tell me you're going to eat here. Disgusting. Decided to hire it to... Yeah, I don't really care about front of house. Go away. Stop waking me from my nightmares. Ugh. Sweet. 
Okay, now we can open. That's it, everything's ready. Time to open the doors. I can't believe it's not butter. Anyway. Skip, 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 go. Day four. Oh my god, they've baby caged me. How could you? Okay, three customs. So it's incredibly likely one of our dishes is going to get wiped out. L literally now. Because I didn't know the numbers of guests total to come in. And I only have one fridge that is now full. That's pretty much the extent I do. Unless they all order the mozzarella and tomato salad. Speaking of, I should probably put two bits of basil in my pocket. I have garnish. A new table of customers has just ordered. Two steaks, one salad. Simple, easy. Yes. Well, Sam. Another thing that does annoy me about this game is that you can literally only put one pan on the stove. Ooh, too much salt. It's fine, we'll take that one on the chin. Also helps if I pick up my other portion of chips. Okay, what we've done wrong here already is we haven't flipped the steak, but yet it's ready. So, big downgrade in quality. So we're not going to get that perfect A. Oh, but I can use double chip fries. Realistically, I should have stood there and babysat them. But when you're one person working in a kitchen and... Yeah, you can't 
babysit every small step. There was no time limit on that salad. I could have put things under the hot lights and left it like that. Also, I'm holding on to the steaks like an idiot. So, hot food first. It's cold, or going cold very quickly, so that's already going to be one complaint on us. So first table, not off to a good start. So we got an AU percent there. Um, I'm actually surprised that C passed. It's still got a 17, not brilliant, but we got max score from everyone else. So I take that back, that service went pretty okay. It wasn't to perfection, but... Yeehoo. Can't put my basil away. No. I don't have to wash these pans either. I can just skip to the next day. GG Nuri. So if we wanted to change the menu, this would be the time to do it or add another dish. Realistically, we want to be going adding to a full menu. But we can get our consomme. The unfortunate thing is, which I absolutely hate that they've done in this game, is you have to do your ordering, which locks you out of things. Unless I've got the ingredients sitting there for each dish, I can't then do the test run to unlock it and things like that. I need to buy a blender. I look at this guy, it is pretty. And there is a food place literally right opposite us. And a restaurant over there. We are in a shit location. Nah, it's not too bad location. Oh boy, the blender. Those who have sat with me in Discord when this game released will know of the Blender rant. We pray it is fixed. Which is fixed. Yeah, that was when it didn't work. Everyone knows of the Blender rant of 2023. What do you need? 
I need veggies. I need meat. I need fishies. I need sundries. Consider it delivered, chef. Hey, get in. Get in there. Bravo 6, go and wait. Yes, yes you did. And it wasn't slow either. It was like a mild version of the fish finger scenario. Like, who the hell would pay £19 for a fish finger bloody sandwich? Who in their right mind would charge £19 for a fish finger fucking sandwich? Drive faster. Please, I beg. Please. I just want to do... Order is here. Cool. I take my crate. And I fill it with a box. And then I fill it with another box. Look at that cheese. That's some good Wensleydale grommet. There's also some brie on there. Some Swiss. I forgot my meat. I left my meat in the fridge. Serve juice. One orange. Oh wait, no, that's a fucking carrot, isn't it? Yes, that is a carrot. Yeah, 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 I know how to use a blender. Season. Missing a lot of salt, not enough basil. So we'll give one and two. I don't think I actually drink. No, I didn't register the second one. There we go. And now we go. Meh. AJ learns fruit and veg in real time on Twitch. Look, I saw orange and I just went orange. Speaking of juice. Next. The orange. Metal tray. Place. The juice. See, this is the part where I'm going to want that second fridge now. Infuse with mid time. And now we've got to wait for it to cool down. So we pick it up and we place it in the fridge. That'll start speeding up its cooldown time because well, it's a fridge. But now I've just lost all those slots for further prep. And also, I only need to make one bowl to unlock the recipe. So, we know we're going to have... Two potatoes, two shallots, two tomatoes... Ball. Two ball. And frozen and stuff will cut to order. Marvellous. Yes. Take the whole thing. Place it. And then we take one. Oh, I've got to cut up my cucumber. How could I forget the cucumber? Cucumber garnish. Slice, 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 slice. You're using the end bits again, you son of a bitch. So, cucumber, you can't really use in a stock. It's... If you did, it would just be like throwing somebody's sneeze into the stock pot. So, end bits of cucumber would go in the bin. Could eat them. It's just not high quality. I'm very happy with that as it is, and I won't get their garnish orientation 
in my unlock, so that will stay the same. That dish is done. So we just wrap it up to keep our responsibility rating high. And then we get back to feckin' book. Potato. Magic. Potato. Peel. Magically chip. Chalute. Other chalute. Choppy, 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 choppy. Man, I keep... Pay no attention to the rage induced goblin hiding in the corner. That leaves me one space, so we will do the same as last time do that one piece of fish. Because it's a two-step thing, so it's not as quick as the steak. You cover it in white stuff and you're done. It should accomplish. We're done. In the fridge. And we go now. Actually, I don't think the balsamic players can keep under the thing. Can it? No, it has to be done. Process of salt. Oh no, we could do green beans. They'll keep. We won't need all of them, but still. Do we have everything for this evening? Yes, yes, we do. Too much soul. Oh my god. How could Roscoe do this to me? How could he add that extra bit of salt that completely fucks the green beans? More importantly, how the fuck did he get in my kitchen? Thirdly, where the fuck's all the cheese? Little bastard. Waitress Yayuka. The next Final Fantasy fourteen expansion pack. The Lala's in your delivery. I mean, I can. It's called a nap in my chair. Honk shoo, honk shoo, snore, me, 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 me. Snore, me, 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 me. It is time. Simba.
and the baby gate is on. The customers are safe from me. So, two customers. Two is the easiest number that you will ever do. Except for one, but it's pretty obvious. Give me the check. 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 Give me the I would like a fishy on a little dishy. So for that, we are also going to need an extra... Going to need to do the balsamic glaze. And a pan for the fish. We're also going to need to turn on our stew. Fish stock butter. Then that preheating. Forget the sugar and the balsamic. What do you need to make a balsamic glaze, chef? Sugar and balsamic. What did you leave in the dry stores? Sugar and balsamic. Right, fish is in. Do this a week, sir. Grab our green beanies, but leave the individual portion there under the lights. Now it's literally just a waiting game. Balsamic glaze is going to finish beforehand, but not with enough time frame to turn around and get that salad knocked out of the way first. So we are going to take that. We'll then take our fish and put it straight under the lights. And that just lets us focus without a problem on the easiest dish on the menu. A little pinch. Will Roscoe come and put more salt on? Oh, he's putting more salt on. Perfect, Roscoe. Good seasoning. The little Lala in the kitchen. So, rule of thumb. Hot food first. Got my little sprig of basil. Get used to that, I will constantly be forgetting the basil. It's off to the table. My next Bex I can't even speak now. My next Bex Defer commission well done, is going to be Chef Roscoe hey. and Chef Soup. It is done. It is decided. My wallet cries in grief. B 
Big Cook, Little Cook. I probably cannot a third of third or fourth or third character, but it would be Waitress Yuyuka as well. In fact, I'd probably ask for the entire FC drawn. Because Vara would definitely be like a barmaid or the head waitress. Yuyuka would probably be waitress. Mulberry that sex appeal, however, he would be my commie chef. Uh, steak and chips. Oki has probably the biggest authority in the FC. Like, gravitas, so they would probably be my sous chef. They, no, they can't be my sous chef. Roscoe's my sous chef. Or I suppose Roscoe could be my chef de party. And Oki could be my sous chef. Interesting thoughts. Yeah, if Roscoe stealing the food would be one of them. Alright, one of each for now. Check, check, check. Uh, two of them, one of them. Perfect. Very good. Onion. All right, I still got medium rare to go, so don't need to rush it. Chips might catch up. No, but I'm gonna watch it, watch it, watch it. Kind of the point, you idiot. Roscoe, get your Dark Knight sword. I have a waiter that needs to talk to you. Ignore the health bar appearing at the top of your screen. And we will unlock the pasta dish. That will give us a full menu rotation, which I cannot edit. Yeah. Um, predictions, two for the steak, one soul, one tomato salad. Well, realistically, we did one steak, one, we did one of each. So your predictions were false, my lord. Exercise my magical flex of just progress to the next step. So now we've got the pasta dish unlocked, we're gonna not update the menu. We're gonna continue with the same rotation we have at the moment, but we are going to 
make the practice dish, unlock it fully. What do you need? So once again, we're only going to order exactly what we need. Consider it done. So you spin me right round, baby, right round, and do this ritualistically until the delivery arrives. I'm winning, Father Gay. Papa Gay, the man, the myth, the legend. Ah, yes, the Just in Time system. Also known as the Justin Timberlake. AKA. My Wonderwall, a.k.a. Mulberry Winkle, a.k.a. Dear God, that is a dragoon in high heels and nothing under that skirt. A.k.a. number 12. So... While we wait for this hey, chef. Just leaving your delivery, here. delivery, I am going to try and remember what hotkey my Be Right Back screen is on. Which is not that one. I mean, what do I like more? The intermission screen or the inter... Or that one. I mean, it's, it's only a quick bathroom break, so... I will be back lickety effin' split.
have returned from the war. And apparently I'm muting every single wrong channel. Although, it does not matter. I mean, it kind of does. And I've just also realized that I am picking up my fan, so I'm very sorry about that. But you will live with it. Quick, 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 quick. So, that is my old lo-fi stream mix from, like... Oh, I have to do math. Last time I streamed in 2021. The playlist got made, and... Yeah, it never got used. Like, let's be real. So I will post the Spotify playlist for it, for those of you that... Oh, really? Because it's picking it up on the sound bounce. Oh, well. It's a good... Um, so yeah, link to the Spotify playlist if anyone would like to listen to those lo-fi goodness. You have a mix of some Kingdom Hearts in there, Final Fantasy VII... Persona 5, some self-made self Final Fantasy 7 based music. We've got very different lo-fis. We've got Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT. Uh, a ReZero song from the anime. Decent mix. I might add more. I probably might, won't. Bex fan overpower my biggest fan. The one that keeps me the coolest. A big wet. A big wet to the ulti nation. Also helps if I unmute the game audio. Fuck me, my controller is hot. What's going on up there? Nothing to worry about, at least. Hello, Alt Tab, my old friend. There we go. And also take us back to the. There we go. I panicked there and thought I did not get the um, right one. So what are we doing? Our delivery has turned up. And not a lot of time has passed, which is good. Means we can catch up. Hang on, let me turn that down. Ow, my knee crunched. Turn it down a bit so it's not on full blast, but I still get a cool blowing breeze. So my room is at 42% humidity with a 32 degrees in C temperature. My windows are wide open. I hate summer. Okay, so ingredients. We're going to need some pasta, a cup of water. So it wants me to begin with a boiling pot of water and cook off that pasta. We are going to need salt for seasoning. Which, if it didn't tell me it needs salt for seasoning, we'd be back on another soapbox tangent. Mmm, pasta. Yours is 26 degrees C, and you shut your windows. See, I don't really care much about the bugs these days. If they're stupid enough to come into my room, they die. Or they, I sleep with my mouth open, so 9 times out of 10, they also probably get eaten. The big noodles. A pinch hey, of salt. I have a favor to ask you. Well, you can take your favor and stick it up your deaf and dumb. I'm cooking. You can wait. Well, actually, I'm on watch patrol, but still. A tasty protein snack.
I will take my pot and I will put it under the hot lights. Keeps my pasta bubbly. You would never keep a boiling pot of water or pasta. It's always nice to see young people move into our community. It reminds me of when I was younger. I know. No opening a restaurant is stressful, but try not to worry too much. Here's a tip. Start small. Work on building a core of regulars. And grow. That's pretty much just basic business. Opa light. But light. Also, can I? No. Somebody else wants to talk to me? Why? Why are you all wanting to talk to me all at once? Hello, chef. The suppliers are launching a huge loyalty campaign today. If you are... In if you use the products of a single supplier, you'll get a discount on your next order. Ah, yes. The classic backhanders. We love them. If you're, you know, an independent business. Because these things can actually go back into your restaurant. If you're someone like a chain restaurant, Nine times out of ten, all those perks end up going towards management. Right, I'm going to put this pasta under the lights. We don't have to get a perfect score when we're testing out a dish, but... The key is trying. Small little pot, saucepan on range. Cheese, water. So we are making a cheese sauce for our pasta. Add the cup of water. Cover. Fuck it, let's season it now. We're going to do some magical stuff. Oh, they actually took the lid off. We're going to fuck up and put too much pepper in. So, cheese sauce. Normally you'd start with a white roux. And a roux is basically melted butter and flour. You, The flour absorbs it and basically turns into a little dough ball inside. And then you start adding something like hot water or milk. So, for a cheese sauce, I personally would use hot milk remove the lid remove am i still in chef sense yes i am that's why i can't remove the lid and then i would have my cheese already grated and ready to go and then you kind of just keep adding the milk a ladle at a time until that nice flour butter flour dough ball starts to turn into a liquid so then you'll have your bechamel sauce, which is pretty much oh, any base for a white sauce. And then you would just throw your cheese in and melt it. Season salt and pepper at the end to taste. Add more cheese to taste. And that's literally it. That is how you make a cheese sauce. Um... Right, we are going to want one of them. I must have to do it at the counter. So once your pasta is cooked and ready to go, it doesn't matter if you just let it go cold. Pasta, when you're when it's already been cooked, you put your sauce in, and essentially all you want to do is really heat the sauce up. Put the pasta in. Once they're both hot, which is literally in a couple of minutes, you can then serve. Industrial spug. Spagoot. It's 
So, dish is done. We take the spigot. If it ends up burning around the rim of your pan like that, something is incredibly freaking wrong. Take over. Serve. Job done. You kind of wouldn't want it to sit in that much sauce. Some people would like it. Some people don't. You want to have it as long as it clings to the pasta nicely. You're normally fine. You can mostly you end up being on a plate. Uh, Bella Italia, we did use lipped dishes. Um, I think that's got more area room. Definitely do not want that. And that would literally be it. That is how we used to actually do it at Bella Italia. For carbonara, they would have... That'll do. Um... You'd have the parmesan shavings on there as well, as well as the pancetta. But you'd obviously have all the good... Well, Begs, you're always hungry. Um, so for carbonara, you would put your pancetta in the pan and let the fat reduce down. Then you've got that nice bacon fat that comes out into your sauce. And then it's pretty much the same sort of routine. You just don't really add pepper. Most people season with pepper anyway, but it's kind of one of those, everyone's taste buds are different. It'll let the guests do it themselves. But since this is a pepper sauce pasta and that's it, you would add the, pe the amount of pepper because you kind of want that over peppery taste, not too harsh just so you notice it. Alright, fling yourself. I wish I could just place it down, not just like, drop, go. Bit better. But honestly, we don't get everything like the Parmesan shavings in our garnish set when we do our own plating, which is pretty annoying. But I'll live. At the top of my game today. You can count on it. Yeah, give Beck some pasta. Give him something to nibble. Because we don't want Bex to get hungry when it gets close to midnight. Because then 2am Bex is more angry. A little snack. But serving that dish pretty much unlocks the pasta for us and we can add that to the menu the next day because now we're pretty much we're there we can start adding more things to the menu we're still keeping to the basic menu I can't wait to start the evening service our customers will be blown away so now we just go prep for service wrong pan cronk
Oh, buddy, you need to do a delivery. Or, like, do an Asda order or something, because you, you guys need food. And, you know, not COVID. How long does it take to put some pot of boiling water? There we go. My lord at the pot, my pot, my lord. Perfect salting. Now we can go to choppy. How's it going today? Potato magic peel. Chop 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 I haven't said it, but pretty much that chopping technique is completely wrong for how you do a shallot. You would go lengthways, do your lines, and then dice. Especially to get it, you know, diced. You can still achieve it if you take those rings, do fours, then you can dice it. But that's just going to take you more time. And also, it's if you don't care how chunky it gets. Ding, green beans are done. But in a kitchen, you're always going to want consistency. So if you're going to have them small and finely diced, you want them always small and finely diced. And if you're doing a soup, it doesn't matter too much. It's going to get blitzed up anyway and put through a chinois. Fantastic menu today. Now, when I say chinois... Pretty much it is a sieve that is the shape of a traffic cone that you pour liquid in and it catches the sediment and stuff. And when you're making a soup, any bits that you can't blitz up after you cook it out for a bit, you then have a clean pan underneath, put it through, and that'll catch all the sediment and you get a nice smooth soup. Right, I'm not going to do the fish this time, because we've done that a few times, we've had it flowered, had one sitting in there, and nobody's taken it. So, now I'll probably get about 50 orders of soul. Ooh, mission objectives? I cannot. Uh, buy two ingredients from the supermarket? No. Complete two great services? Might, maybe. We'll probably get that one. Cook four dishes that are at a minimum grade A. That's pretty easy. We should be getting grade A's for most things, or aiming for grade A. Or a grade A star. So, quick time skip. We get that cutscene every single time we do anything, so I'm going to start skipping those sort of cutscenes. So, two customers. Two is the easiest number you'll ever do. One would be great. I'm going to put two basil in my pocket now, just so... Oh, three. I thought that was a waitress. Ooh. And I'm going to switch my fryer on because we are starting service. Just so we got nice hot oil. Give me the order. Give me the order. Give it to me. Give me the order. We have the order from the new table, chef. Um, one of each, you son of a bitch. Um, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. First things first, we're going to get our balsamic glaze out of the way. That frees up my two cooking ranges for other things. Spink. In it goes. And while that's doing its thing, we are going to sort out our proteins. 
man forgot bag or flew here. Protein. Cuts two fillets, only gets one. A fool of a took. Come back and give it a regular stir so it doesn't all stick and burn. Fish protein achieved. Now we'll grab our stock, then we're in butter, then we're just ready to scream, aim, and fire. Did I have my green beans done? Yes, I did. One pan off, we can get that on the heat and get that heat going to the nice hot consistency for our steak. And we're also going to put it on the side ready for when we go into the sear. Nice, hot, red, yes. Take it, take the pan, T no, take the pan. And we'll just dump it over here, screw it. Cold pan for our fishy. He says just turning the gas on, but that's fine. Doesn't matter too much. All right, in goes the fish. In goes the steak. I don't have my salt. I don't have my pepper. Full of a toque. Full of a toque. Fish isn't too bad. Step one, season. Single salt, single pepper. Check consistency. Perfect. Fish is doing fine. Add our butter at first step. Mm, won't do my chips yet. And we flip. Job done. Fish is fine. Keep them at medium heat. We're not rushing things. And we want that to a medium wreck and steak. So at this point, now I'm going to chuck my chips in. What I'm going to do is take that out and stick that straight under the hot light so it doesn't get cold. And we're going to dump that beside. Same with our oh, chips are ready. All right, they're going to set on fire. Shut your face. Heat be a hot. Peter, I leave you for three seconds and you go from A to B. This ain't the Sesame Streets. Big Bird can't save you now. A little more salt, Roscoe. Perfect. Carry on. Glaze. Take it. Take it. Take it away. Not a big blow. I don't think that B will hit us very hard. That looks delicious, Shen. I don't know why he poses with every single one. We don't stand there at the pass and just fold our arms and go, Yes! I have done good! We compile that, like, after service and just, like, holy shit, I survived. Alright, so we've got enough for one more steak and one more tomato and mozzarella salad. One customer, I think because of how early we are in the game, she will probably be our last one. So we just need him to, oh yeah, give her the table of six, not the table of four. 
how do you like that big table to yourself? Can you tell me you have no friends without telling me you have no friends? She has gone for Lestic. So once again, we're just going to leave our pans at the back. There is a limit to how many pans you can have unwashed, but we're not going to hit that. And if we do, you'll just hear me cry a little. Okay, so one of you, two of you. Nice. Do a little spin in front of the food, pray to the gods that nothing bad happens to it. And we're now entering stage two, so give it a nice flip. Bleep. Oh, we added our onions at stage two. We should have added that at stage one. Silly Roscoe. Can the chips finish before we go into the well done stage? Nah, too close. And job done. Boah, you know what you did, rumbly scrumbly. It's not over. Alright, considering no one has come in, we're going to start washing some pans. In the sink, not the KP area. Great well done, everyone. Oh, I guess that is the end. I'll take it back. Yeah, that bee didn't affect us after all. Still pretty scored in the A's overall, so not too bad. Pretty decent. I can't be bothered to wash up. We'll let the magic wizard in the back do that. Did you close with a customer still eating? Yes. Yes, we did. They are now our KP. We have trapped them in here. For them to leave the next night, they must wash all my pots and pans. This is not a hostage negotiation, this is a hostile promise. So now we've got the new dishes unlocked, we're going to add them to the menu so that I can do the ordering. I'm going to get more portions out of the pasta. So we're going to change that to the special, even though I have more expensive dishes. I have the steak and the fish, but that's by the by. Anything else we can unlock at the moment? Veal and fresh garden salad, or meatballs. We can probably unlock both, to be fair. Yeah, we can. But we are going to prep our full menu, and then I think I'm going to call the stream there. Do you need something for the fridges? 
nine, five, three. I can't really double up on vegetables. Because that is pretty much near capacity as is. Um. Okay, just let me know if you need anything. Did the game just glitch me out and steal my money? No, I just cannot afford it. <laughs> Shit. Don't need my services? No problem. See you later. This is where I started with 105. Well, lads, guests, honored opinions. And now I've put it on there, I can't replace it. Shit. Um, okay, we can remove one of these. Let's remove the soup. We'll put the pasta on special. What do you need today? We can afford that. I'll have your order soon. Lads, I'm broke. I don't know how I've become broke, but apparently now I'm broke. I'm pretty sure we hit a bug. This is a secret mechanic for later. Can I edit the restaurant yet? No. I don't think I've unlocked that far yet, but you can change, like, the restaurant itself and your kitchen layout. And, like, your colours, your aesthetics, yada yada yada. The vents. That's how Roscoe gets in. Roscoe's not allowed to use the doors. There's your order! Thank you. Okay, what's the only new element we've really got in this? The pasta. What can we store and what can we not store? We can leave the cheese sauce under the warmer. Then we can leave the pasta under the warmer. But then that screws me over for green beans. This is kind of why you always want a second warmer. Which I don't think I can afford a second warmer. I can't afford the ingredients, so... Hot lights, yeah, 300. Not a hope in hell. Realistically, I should have took the green beans and the soul off. Uh, supplies are launching a huge loyalty. You just told us this. I think we just found the source of the bug. You'll get a discount. After I take all your money. Wait, 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 wait. Right, we are going to. Sort out a pasta. I'm gonna. Hmm. Hmm. 
scream into the void actually, but. I guess I'm going back in the fucking building. Source, I think it yielded three. Well, that was the wrong button, Kronk. But it actually does make my decision easier, so we're going to do the pasta as and when we need it. We're going to carry on with the cheese sauce. We can put that under the burner. We can leave the pasta under the lights. Which real life you would you would not do. That would be the dumb. Right, that water is boiled. Start season. My chef senses are tingling. Or it's Ulti's left ass cheek, one of the two. They tell me Rombly is in the pantry eating all my cheese again. They're also telling me Bex is hungry. Feed Bex. We'll ignore you. You can stand at the door. When I'm ready. No. Nope. Water. That would help. We will be ending the stream soon, as uh, but I hope you have good spedge. Is it though? Is it really? Alright, so we also have the soul and the steak still on there. We also still have the mozzarella salad. So once this is done and under the lights, we can go to Choppy 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 Town. So two of them. Ah, a regular onion. My favourite. Two of them. And my cheese. Yoink. Unlocked dice tomatoes. Do we have everything for this evening? All right, that's prepped and done. Let's 
And once again, we're a bit stuffed on the protein side. So we have got the pasta and the sauce ready. We've prepped the salt as far as we can. We've prepped two of the basil salads and we've got the ingredients for salad. So that is pretty much all we need to do for prep work. I need help. Protein would be nice, but oh well. Right, this house is time for very much to grab. With all these new customers, you're going to need to help with some of the cooking. So I'll be your sous chef. I'm going to school. So great for us, we now have everything okay. This guy helping us, but he's also kind of got to do the cleaning, so he won't be any use for us for prep. Ah, the health inspector. My mortal enemy. You make sure everything is good and safe, but you also nitpick it. Still a small little fucking thing. Alright, is our hygiene max or is that still squiffy? Hygiene is pretty much a max, so... Let's set you to making extras. Hey. It's probably where I just sit in my chair and hit the skip button and it has nothing done. What's up? Now what you want? You know, I haven't had a chance to create my own recipe since culinary school. So yeah, basically I've got to have him prep some of the soul dishes. needs to fill up five soul, cut three sat fennel, so we need to keep doing the soul so it upgrades to the next step, and then we can start tackling his challenge. Seven o'clock's kind of a late start for service. So I can give him orders during the service. Oh, I did have him prep and stuff. What's he got? Pigs in blanket with tomato sauce and one dessert. Do you need my help for anything? Not yet. What orders can I give you? So he can cut me a fillet. He just can't apply flour to it. Man can't dip in flour. Make it make sense. Ugh, and you can't even do me some bloody pasta. Useless. Well, I guess you're my protein guy. Give me the order. Mm. We have a new table of customers, chef. So one fish, one salad. So I can't get him to do the balsamic glaze, so we're kind of on our own from that. Green beans on the side. Picked up two tomatoes. I wanted mozzarella. Why? Sit there. Cross-contaminate. Actually, to be fair, I could have got him to do that. What 
task can I help you with? The task or shut your face. When you are needed, I will call upon you. I'm also gonna grab salt pepper now, just so it's there. Butter. So this will give me more than plenty of time for me to turn around and start doing that. Mozzarella salad. While the fish finishes itself I off, that is a big bottle of water. A wine. Season, my little rumbly. Season. Perfect little Roscoe. Alright, and that can just sit in my pocket while we wait for the fish. Which is... nearly done. You don't know what to work on, and yeah, I'm just here working. My basil. A mood, a big mood. Well done, chef. Nice work. And away it goes. Now come back and grab the other one. And then we clean. I mean, he's got time to lean, he's got time to clean, but apparently I can't give that as an order. Quickly go do the wash up. Which, if I'm honest, that's probably where I should have put him in the first place, rather than the prep station. <clears throat> but honestly, I'd rather he gets levels up as quick as I can. Ooh, three. What is thy poison? I'm available if you need anything. We know you're available, we've seen your dating profile. Steak, salad, and a soul, so he can... Oh lordy, prep my soul. Right away. I really love that rock and roll. Um, he can also prep the protein. Apparently that is too hard for him to okay. do two tasks. So once again, we're just going to turn the fryer on because I am a dodo. Get the balsamic out of the way. That's for the steak. Yeesh. two proteins.
I don't have anything to do. Oh, buddy. How tragic for you. I would give you more to do, but unfortunately, you can't do anything more than cut pieces of meat for me. Spoon, liquid, say hello. Place you there, take you up, pop you down. I need a challenge. All right, and on that note, we can. Quickly wait for the steak to get to two, put together our salad. So we also kind of have to wait that to get to well done. Enough salt, Jesus Christ. Right, what we... I don't <clears throat> know what to work on. Where? Okay, what you can work on is cut me another bit, mate. No problem. And some shallots. Wow, you're really taking all day just to cut those onions, aren't you? It's fine. Easy recovery. I don't have anything to do. They might not get it happy, but they'll at least get good food. And at the end of the day, that's all we really want. Although I won't make it by a hair. I'm available if you need anything. I don't think they're happy. I heard the girl. That smells so good, chef.
And once again, I forgot my bloody basil. Story of my life. Oh, we have enough experience to upgrade the salad. Can't remember what upgrades to now. Wait, did we just literally have that one table and that was it? Oh no, it was still two tables. I mean, we got a 70. It wasn't brilliant. We could do better. We might have enough to uh, make a profit the next day. On ingredients. This is also where it's going to be a case of trying to balance the menu between veg dish, fish dish, vegetable dishes. Just for our ordering purposes. Oh yeah, we can't upgrade it while it's on the menu. Mm. Well... That is actually going to be all the stream from me today. volume switching so thank you everyone who came and stuck around thank you to all the lurkers who were still saw you in the chat thank you very much completely fine to lurk you are pretty much the lifeblood of most streams you're welcome Bextifer. i will likely jump into the fc chat in a moment while i download the new aliens game and play that for a while uh, who do I have around that's probably good to raid? Absolutely no one. Cryface. Um, so yeah, we won't be raiding anyone today. V very crying. I'm just going to find a... Let's have a look for smaller channels. No, not really. Not a game I would be like, wow, go, go watch it, and that would be amazing. So, thank you again, and I'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.